Yeah? Great. It's, it's like home. Canada's like home. We'll make it as much as we can. The Commonwealth Connection. Brand new LP, Should the World Fail to Fall Apart, is the name of the record. What a wonderful cover. It is a nice cover, and I gather it's different from the one in the UK. Yes, it is. Yeah, Canada wanted me to uh, a designer sleeve for the release here, which I agreed to, and that's how it turned out. The title of the album intrigues me. Did you expect at some point the world would fall apart? Yeah. At one point in my life, I suppose when Bauhaus ended, mm. it was like a point of loss of uh, security and... You know, you commit yourself to something very heavily for a long period of time, and it ends. And like I think anyone gets that sort of rebuff uh, situation where you feel a bit lost, like a bit unsure about what what you're going to do. So it was basically about that. And like it's a very positive title. It's just about well, it didn't fall apart, and this is what happens when something actually doesn't fall apart. It's positive and it's expressive and it's happening. Did you really feel like you were sort of floundering around as an artist for well, not, a while? Not, really, direction? not as an artist, just as really wanting the desire uh, to carry on doing music, for instance. Like, I felt just unsure as uh, to whether, like, I could uh, really experience as vital, like, a creative life, like, as I did in, in Bauhaus. Mm. Like, uh, I have, I think. You have two... Uh, God, I look white. Sorry. No, you look great. Uh, you have two uh, potent collaborators on this record in uh, Howard Hughes and uh, Ivo. What are their roles in, in making the recording? Uh, well, Howard is really giving to me in, in that uh, uh, he interprets my ideas. I hear melodies all the time and like, I can't uh, necessarily play them technically. So he will actually transpose ideas down. Like I'll say, la 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 la, you know, like I want this in strings. Like I want Ivo, like I want this uh, to be like this. Like I describe it as like an overall feel, and give the atmosphere, and describe it in w in like a literal sense, and try to put over the images rather than trying to do it all myself. Like I realise my limitations, and therefore so I use other people to help me uh, formulate my ideas. You know? Sonically, it's such a beautiful recording. The yeah. sounds are phenomenal. Yeah. Do you take a fairly playful approach to finding those sounds and putting them yeah, together? Yeah, that's important, I think. Rather than taking it uh, too seriously, choosing Ivo was, was really mainly to do with that. I really like his own stuff. Uh, uh, he does his own music in a 4 AD, which is called This Mortal Coil, and it's suited the ideas that I had. His uh, ideas on mixing and sound seem very rich and very like etheric, mm -hmm. which I saw my music as being, which I wanted to get into my music and concentrate more on sound and mixing uh, very carefully once I got the song together. Sometimes you can lose something when you hurry something too much. So we spent a lot of time working out ideas together. And uh, uh, just having I Ivo around, that was his input really, his, his uh, taste. Well, he's the label director as well for 4 ideas. Well, he well. is, yeah. So does that mean he's kind of an executive on one hand and a musical well, no, person on the what other? What it is with Ivo, uh, he's just a sweetheart who loves music and one day decided to, to be the catalyst for something called this mortal coil, which means uh, uh, he brought together people he liked a lot and got them to make music, which he directed and mixed and everything else. Hmm. So like in that sense, he's a creator too. So our relationship was creative rather than executive type mm. company. We have the, the first video from the album. Do you want to tell us about it and set it up, introduce it? Find a solution. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was filmed with Peter Kerr, the director in London, who works like the old school directors did when videos were being made, like Telegram Sam, our early ones. A lot of directors now are really using video like as a leap into film and don't, don't tend to put like a lot of creativity into videos. So like I chose Peter to work with him heavily on it and just to simplify it. And like I just wanted one shot, uh, performance shot. I wanted to project the whole song through that, putting in you know various images just to com uh, complement the overall feel of it. That was the idea. Did you get what you wanted? I think, yeah, I, I like it a lot. It's simple, it isn't over the top. It isn't over complicated. Here's Peter Murphy on Much Music. <laughs> Fall Apart, that's Peter Murphy on <coughs> Music, and uh, has a cover of a Parubu song that I don't know the original version of. What drew you to that song? The original version was a Bauhaus, typical Bauhaus tour tape song, 
and it was one of the songs we used to listen to on tour, and just so you know, while away the hours. And it was one like I'd logged in for some time, like I'd like to do it. Choosing cover versions is, is important, I think. Like it should relate somehow to your own music and not merely be like a commercial effort. Yeah. Like in order to gain more sales or whatever. So this, this felt really great to sing. It, it was one of those really good vocal vehicles. You know. Oh, it's so raw sounding. Right. But, and, yeah. and they're like immediate, right? And thrown in like amongst my, the rest of the album material, it sort of tended to balance it out. Well, I love the quote, uh, girls won't touch me because I've got a misdirection. <laughs> where were well, you heading at the time? Star, <laughs> like all those girls who were wondering where this erotic blacks spider had gone from Bearhouse days were, were, you know, turning their backs. I mean, they were sort of, no one was buying the record and they, they all didn't, you know, thought that I'd become, I don't know. That's how it felt. So, so like it was just a self satire, tongue in cheek mm. song in a sense as well. Would you say that your, your face has been your fortune as much as the music you've made? It helps. <laughs> no, it helps because I think, you know, like if you've got like, a certain amount of theatricality and can sort of uh, project what you're, you're singing. I think it uh, just helps to connect the song. And there's no danger of distracting from the... No, not, not if, if one is actually like totally inside the song and not, not just projecting something totally disjointed from a song. Mm -hmm. That's when it becomes a sham. But if you used to perform it from from that sort of real gut level, I suppose. It, people see that, I think, in a live situation. And that's why an audience will react much more, much strongly, much more strongly than maybe, say, say somebody who, who isn't comfortable on a stage and feels that, you know, like it's a, a necessity that they have to do, play live, you know. Like a model who becomes a singer, that type of thing. Yeah. There's a few of those. Nick Cayman. We, we Nick don't have to measure names. <laughs> um, speaking of that, now, you, we haven't seen it in North America, but you did a Max L ad in the UK. Did you get a lot of heat from the press? No, Or from all, your fans no. for that? No. It was subversive in a sense because I was... It was the exact opposite of my image at, on stage, like, at the time. And, like, I enjoyed doing it because suddenly Peter Murphy was... What's he doing on this... Television commercial, sitting there looking pretty and earning a small fortune. <laughs> it was really real fun. Yeah. I didn't earn a small fortune, and like, also I got the chance uh, to work with a director who finally helped us and shot. She's in parties the video, so like it was a good experience in that I experienced the workings of a of a really uh, top class uh, uh, director at work. And also just watching the whole thing, you know, yeah. being involved in it, and just checking it out and using the contacts in order to make my stuff, our, our videos, just as interesting as we wanted them to be. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. We've, uh, we've got the Dally's Car video uh, coming up. And what, uh, as you look back at that particular time, what were you looking to accomplish musically with that venture? Well, what I wanted to do was to really work with Mick more than we actually ended up doing. So. Uh, the idea was really strong, but the actual the outcome maybe was not as uh, strong as it could have been. You were disappointed? Not totally, but it's just that you know the like it uh, uh, became a bit of a more obviously the more we worked together, a more of a one album project. And like I was getting much more, much more of my own ideas during the recordings. So like it was a good period to really reassess and, and uh, discover my own ideas, really. Mm. Confidence in my own ideas. But Mick's really talented. And it's, I'm sure like I gained experience in the studio from working with Mick because he's really meticulous and overly meticulous, I think, sometimes. That can make something really sterile and take away an energy from the song, but it was okay. It was mm. right. So we, we made a video and then said, okay, let's go. Goodbye. Let's take a look. This is Dali's car. I much music. Experiment for Peter Murphy, who's my guest today. And it was a thing in Melody Maker. I couldn't figure out whether you wrote this or not. It said five years of heaven, four bats from hell. That was me. Three chords to play with, too many critics, 
and one good, good band. band. <laughs> Is that a retrospective of Bauhaus? Yeah, absolutely. Poignant. Uh, to the point. As you look back, as the time kind of stretches out since then, do you, what do you miss the most about the group? Nothing. Nothing. It's happening now. I'm, I'm really, I feel uh, just as vital and you know, stimulated as ever. I think, yeah, looking back sometimes can be too inhibiting. I think, you know, uh, things have happened, you know, good and bad, but this is what's happening now. How do you react to the uh, the Love and Rockets recordings and the kind of neo psychedelic videos that accompany yeah, them? Yeah, that that uh, surprises me. W knowing them well, they profess to have a very very strong uh, belief in keeping things very very eclectic and different, you know, changing all the time. And it's strange to hear them sort of taking on one direction, but it's it's good. They their recordings are really well crafted, I think, and they're making the most out of their voices, which is good. But I haven't seen them live yet. I'd like to. Mm. Have you seen them. the videos? I'll see them in, Do you see the as videos? friends. I've seen one, Yin the, the Bubble Man video, which is like a Bauhaus sort of imagery. Oh, yeah. Which were you know, the Bauhaus Bubble Men, but they've taken it. Have you seen them? Oh, yeah, we play them all the time. Right. The other ones are, are very bizarre, so yeah. the psychedelic. Danny looks great. We should show them to yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you very much for coming by, Peter. I have a little souvenir here for you. I'm not sure if it'll go with thank the other one. Thank you very much. Uh, Keep you warm through the Canadian winter. That's great, thank you. And I want to mention Toronto at the Thanks. RPM Club. Uh, that's tonight, the 19th. And uh, if you're in the Windsor area, well, you can catch uh, Peter Murphy in performance at St. Andrew's Hall in Detroit. And that is Saturday night, the 21st. Panic in Detroit. Panic in Detroit. Hope the rest of the tour goes well. Thanks a lot. And thanks for joining us. Okay. Gonna wrap it up thanks. with some Bajos. She's in parties. So much music.